Well, good afternoon, everybody. This is Five Minute Fridays with Pastor Hobbs. I pray and hope all is going well with you and yours. I'm going to go ahead and get our timer started, as is our tradition. I took a little bit of time off the top, but let's go ahead and jump into things. I remember as a youth in high school, my math teacher uh, gave the class this moral lesson. Now, I don't know if it was just the class or if it was me. Could have just been me. I used to get in a little bit of trouble in high school. I know you don't believe it. I, I really did. Uh, but she said, you know, there was uh, this grandfather who was giving a lesson to his grandson while they were out one winter. The grandson had asked, what makes a person good and what makes a person bad? The grandfather had responded, well, there's two wolves inside of an individual. There's this good wolf and there's this bad wolf. And they're constantly fighting and waging war against one another. Now, whichever wolf that individual feeds will determine what type of person that individual will be. And so if that person is feeding the good wolf more and doing more good things, that individual will become a good person. The person who's feeding the bad wolf and is participating in bad things or evil things, that person is en route to become a bad person or an evil person. Well, for us in the faith, uh, that's not really aligned with our theology accurately, but the Bible does teach that the spirit and the flesh are contrary to one another. They are at war with one another. And in fact, when you become a new believer, you experience a new birth in which the Holy Spirit enters into you and you become the resident temple of God. Isn't that amazing? Well, when that happens, this flesh that we have does not just go away. It doesn't just cease to exist. Our problems, our struggles, our temptations don't just go away, but instead we have the power within us through the Holy Spirit in order to conquer and to control this flesh. For we are no longer controlled by sin. We've broken free of that in Christ. But Paul would argue, right, that there's this thorn in his flesh that he has. And he would even write that, you know, I try to do good as best as I can, but somehow I wind up doing wrong. And when I try and I try and I try not to do wrong, I still do wrong. This week, we're going to be talking about chastity. Chastity is this understanding of purity as it relates to the flesh, in particular with celibacy. Now, to expand that a little bit, it really is not just purity of flesh, but as Christians, we're also called to be pure in heart, pure in mind, pure in soul, as well as pure in flesh. Now, as I mentioned before with Paul, he has this thorn in his flesh. Many of us understand that to be human means that we have struggles, that we go through trials and tribulations. And the question that we sometimes will ask ourselves is how do we remain pure? Psalm 119 in verse 9, I believe, says, uh, the young man will ask, how may I be pure? And God's response is, by meditating and listening to my instructions. Saints, if we are to live a pure life before God, a life in which Psalm 24 would argue uh, clean hands and a pure heart, that's what allows you to see God. In, in Matthew, in the Beatitudes, it says, blessed are the poor, uh, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. If we are to be in this place where we can engage with God in an intimate way, we can engage with God in a deep way, where we can leave lives, and as the Bible says, the pure see pure, to all things for the pure are pure. If we are to be in this place, we have to continue to meditate on God's word. And we have to ask that question, one of the 22 from John Wesley, did the Bible live in me today? Did the Bible live in me today? Because if the Bible lives inside of us, then we will be able to live lives that are worthy of the calling of Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. And so I want to end with this. Paul writes, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is worthy of respect, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if something is excellent or praiseworthy, 
Think about these things. As he says in Romans 13, 14, create no space to gratify your flesh, but instead think about what's pure and commendable and ask yourself, did the Bible live in me today? And if the answer is yes, by the grace of God, we're on our way to maintaining our purity. If the answer is no, then we know what we need to pray about. Five Minute Fridays with Pastor Hop. I pray and hope that this message has blessed you. Uh, I hope to see you this Sunday in church. I hope to see you at some of the many Easter activities that we are doing. I hope your spring break is going really, really well. Uh, I hope that you are remaining pure on your spring breaks, young adults. Amen. Yes, Pastor did call you out. All right. But anyway, y'all have fun. We'll see you on Sunday, either virtually or in person, and hopefully at some of the events that are coming up. God bless.